Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Thigpen. Go ahead, Mike. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Just Be a Man podcast. Tonight, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a little social event that's been going on, um, social justice, awareness, um, empowerment, um, breaking the silence, and it's in regards to the Me Too movement. The Me Too movement, or hashtag Me Too movement, with variations of related local and the international names of social movement against sexual abuse and sexual harassment uh, when people publicize allegations of a sex crime. The phrase Me Too was initially used in context on social media in 2006 on MySpace by a sexual harassment survivor and activist Tara Burke. Tonight's topic, we're gonna to talk about that, how it's affecting the male versus female, um, you know, the awareness and, uh, how uh, people are empowered or disempowered. And uh, we're gonna start it off with uh, Charles. Why don't we start off with you? In regards to the Me Too movement, um, what's your thoughts on the Me Too movement? So, so Mike, I'm sorry, but can we, be, can we start with the, the promo before we get jump, jump to that? Oh yeah, well, let's go back to the promo. The promo is, let's talk about uh, the Manscaped. Go ahead, Brother Wayne. All right, hey, how's everybody doing today? Hey, we just wanna let you know, uh, we have a wonderful partnership with Manscaped and they are just launching, it's breaking news, they're just launching their newest product. It is the Lawn Mower 4.0. 4.0 is the latest and greatest that they have to offer. And in fact, this entire team has been, has received the product and had the opportunity to use it. I, I see, you see a lot of smiles on these people's faces because they've been using the Manscaped. Yes, sir. The Lawn Mower. So, <laughs> So uh, as you can see up on our screen, we have a promotion code. So JBAMScape, JBAMScape at, at manscaped.com and you will get 20% off plus free shipping. We are among the first to, to receive the product. And so we wanna make share that with you guys. And so hopefully everyone will have an opportunity. Father's Day is coming up really quickly here. So make sure you take care of that. So mm -hmm. just a couple real quick things we want to talk about is, you know, the 3.0 was a great product, but they've made a lot of, a lot of improvements. Um, some of the things that they've done have just made it a lot easier, sleeker. And one of the big points is that it's wireless. It's wireless, wireless charging. I mean, it was always wireless, but it's wireless to charge. So it's a little sleeker, a little better. It's, it's, uh, it's waterproof, bring it in the shower, make it happen. So it's way better than any of the other trimmers that are out there. So anyone who's concerned with the, I think they call it the below the belt care, mm -hmm. this is your product. This is your product. So again, feel free to use the, the promotion code JBAMScape at JBAMScape at Manscape for a 20% discount and watch your life change. I'll tell you one thing about Manscape on uh, the 4.0. It's much better than some of those hair removal products that if you mess around and forget that you got it on there, it'll burn you. You know, you don't have to worry about that with Manscaped. You know, it's, it's a razor, it's a clipper. It doesn't leave any shaking marks, mm -hmm. which, which yeah. could happen. Yeah, you're not supposed to put that cream in, in those certain places anyway. Well, but, well yes. I mean, back in the day, that's all you had. And, you know, you had to be prepared for anything. So, um, right. Yeah, now, now, now you can have clippers that um, are safe and reliable. And yes, you. Thank you, Stefan. And again, everybody. I got the full government name. <laughs> thank no you, doubt. Stefan Deville. Uh, the uh, Manscape again get twenty percent off. Get twenty percent off with the special code JBAMSCAPE. Twenty percent off and free shipping. Thank That's you, right. guys. Back to you, Mike. All right, so we're going to start off with Charlie Rock. Uh, Charles, um, you know, we know that the Me Too movement is a very sensitive topic. It evolved over a period of time. So um, what's your take on it, and how do you think it's affecting uh, the male versus the female? I mean, the female versus the male. Uh, I mean, I think it's an important topic. You know, obviously, um, you know, men have been objectifying women for centuries, and I think um, it, it was necessary to move into this movement, the Me Too movement, because, you know, let's face it, man, women have been, have not been treated as equals over the years. We know it, they know it. Um, in many cases, they've been treated like sex objects, things of that nature. And it's something that um, um, 
is is necessary in order to move our society in the right direction. Now, the, the one thing that I, I will say that, you know, society is kind of in a weird place right now because uh, sex is still being used to, to sell. You know what I mean? Every other video that you see is is women twerking and, and, and things of that nature. So, yeah, we're pushing more towards the, you know, the me to the uh, the empowerment of women and things of that nature. But at the same time, man, that that sexuality thing um, is still out there. And let's face it. Also, women still use sexuality for personal gain in, in some cases. And I'm not, you know, again, trying to objectify women trying to, you know, you know, play down the Me Too movement, because like I said, it's something that is critically important for us. Okay. All right, good. All right, Wayne, what say you, brother? So I agree with what Charles is saying, right? And, and, and um, you know, this Me Too movement is a, has a lot to do with like the whole feminist movement and things like that, right? So this is stuff that everyone is aware of and have talked about for years and whatever. Uh, just this past weekend, a group of us got together and and, um, and we were having a conversation after a round of golf. And, and one of the people that was there made a really interesting comment was that the way society operates today is so different than it was 30 years ago. And, and so the relationship between men and women and what was accepted and what was not and what is not accepted is just very different. I, I'm not saying one's right and the other one's wrong. I'm just saying it's different. So, so if we take an example of someone who gets caught up in this, let's just think, you know, let's just go to Bill Cosby, right? Mm -hmm. He got in trouble for stuff like in the 70s and 80s. Like, like that's like 40 years ago. Was it, you know, if he did whatever they said he did, then he deserves what he gets. But I'm just saying society, if you, some people, if you're old enough, you go back, people used to be able to smoke in their office. In their at their desk, like that's just it, things were just different, right? So, so I think it's it's I think it's important that people are treated the way they need to be treated. Any unwanted sexual advances should be should not be tolerated, mm -hmm. point blank. But but I but I also think that you can't play it both ways, right? Right. Okay. So, you can't play both ways. So now if, and I know it has nothing to do, like Charles is talking about the twerking and how people do what they do. You know, that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that you, that, that you don't deserve respect or whatever, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but, but how many times, you know, there's a thing called, there's a thing called the casting couch. Like I didn't just make that up. That's been around for a long time. So, so now if you are someone who took partake, partook, in that cast and couch kind of a situation. And because of that, your career went through the roof. You probably don't have a whole lot to say. But but if you're someone else who went through that process and it it, it never clicked for you, you're gonna be salty. I, you know, I got more to say, but I'm gonna let Steph go. All right, Steph. Hey, I'm gonna go back to the definition. Um, and I think Mike, you kind of touched on it. You know, um, basically, the um, the or the originator of Me Too said, um, "Me Too is to empower sexually assaulted individuals through empathy, empathy and solidarity through strength in numbers, especially young and vulnerable men and women, by visibly demonstrating how many have survived sexual assault and harassment, especially in the workplace." Me Too um, really gained ground with the installment of Donald Trump. And why I say that it is, people said, you know, enough is enough. If this man who has verbally said that he's assaulted women um, and you don't have it in writing, but I mean, it, hey, he messed with a, a porn star, you know, and it wasn't harassment, but it was a deal. I think it took off from there. And then of course, Harvey Weinstein or Weinstein, um, you know, he, Basically, the casting couch, hey, if you want this role, you got to come through me and you know what you need to do. People got, got to the point where they said enough is enough, you know, and, and that's why it grew. And, and that's why it, sh it should be uh, a continual process because 
not, not only a young uh, women being assaulted, but you also have young men. Hell, Terry right. Crews admitted that he was assaulted. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who's bold enough to assault Terry Crews, but somebody was bold enough. Um, he ain't always been that big. Uh, as long as I've known him. <laughs> you know, although I wasn't around him in high school, but still, you know, so it, it happens, unfortunately. Okay. Um, my uh, another question I have for you guys is uh, Wayne. Do you think um, um, can the Me Too uh, movement or individual um, can it be abused by the accusers, whether they're male or female? Absolutely. Uh, that's kind of what I was alluding to before, right? You can't have it both ways. So, <clears throat> if let's just go back to Bill Cosby, right? So let's just say, and, and I don't, I didn't keep tabs on so I don't know what the real final numbers ended up being but it was like one person then two people right so then like when you get to like five or six you know then they're like okay this is real and it, it's easy to add another 10 or 20 right like this is a dude who is a habitual whatever he's accused of and so if that 19th 20th person even if it's bullshit it, it still counts against him you know what I mean just because they had some sort of an encounter they they passed each other in the hallway or whatever it was. So yeah, of course it can be abused. I, I, of course it can be abused. I, I, I want to jump in on that. Um, yeah. Definitely it, it can be abused. All right, look at an example. Um, there was a high school football player out in Long Beach, California, who basically um, was accused of rape. And he went to jail. He was a talented guy, a, extremely talented. And they really believe he would have done well in college and possibly professional kind of find out this young lady lied, but he went to jail and destroyed his, you know, any chance of a successful life. Um, but then you also have um, Deshaun Watson, who's being accused of sexual assault. You know, and he's got like 19 people that have jumped on the bandwagon. But, you know, and, but in, in the end, of, eventually I think he'll be exonerated, you know, and it was just a smear campaign just to destroy his career. So sometimes, you know, reports of sexual harassment, um, you know, can destroy somebody, even if it's if it's false. Yeah, it's, it's like any litigation, right? It doesn't matter if it's, there's an accusation. It doesn't matter if it's true. You got to defend yourself. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think, Charles? Oh, did I ask you already, Charles? No, I mean you you didn't, but I, I pretty much agree with what has already been said. Um, it, it's really a fine line. You know, I know that there are thousands upon thousands of women that have been victimized. You know, my wife was victimized. You know, she was, um, you know, in the workplace and someone was attempting to sexually harass her or higher up in the business. Uh, she didn't go for it. She pressed charges. And, um, you know, that individual luckily lost his job, but there was some backlash for her. You know, she was now known as the whistleblower, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And there's a cost associated with being a whistleblower. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's something that can be dam very damaging, you know, for you. It could, it could slow things for you in the workplace or, you know, have people looking at you or talking about you, you know, a certain kind of way. So I see it on both ends because we all are well aware of those situations where women have just outright lied as well and claim to have been victimized by someone and they weren't. And I think, you know, part of turning that around means that maybe there need to be some changes as it relates to the laws in our, in our nation. You know, when a woman falsely ac accuses a guy and he does some time and, and all of a sudden she recants her story some years later, you know, that damage is done. But I've it never heard it of it a too. situation where she, the accuser, was then subject to punishment. I, I've, I've yet to hear about that scenario. So that is something that absolutely needs to change. But it's, um, you know, again, it's one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't type scenarios, Mike. You know, there are victims, unfortunately, on both sides of the equation. And, um, you know, th there you have it. So, you know, what to do about it, I'm, I'm really not sure. But it's definitely a problem that we have in this society. Right. And, and Mike, if I could just say, yeah. um, you know, about the abuse, I mean, just think about it. If you have these big name cases and I don't know five, 10 people are in, and there's going to be some major class action. Don't you, there are opportunities. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There are. So like, yeah, let me get a piece of that. 
So yeah, I ran into him once and, and things like that. And so like, it's kind of like what Charles says, it, there's real, there's real crimes out here. There's no doubt there's real abuses that are out here, but just because they are, it's kind of like we, like society kind of, I don't want to say overcorrects, but that's kind of what they do. So they go all in on anything. So if, if two people char- uh, two people accuse you, it might as well be a thousand. They're going to take all, right. all, all of them going to come. Right. You know, they're they're going to accept all of them. Like, you know, and it, Stefan brought up a uh, uh, previous president and like, there was no backlash, like nothing. It was just a, it was just a little, he got a little bit of bad press, but when has he not? Right. So, so it's just like, but, but these other people go to jail, like, like do real time. These mm-hmm. old ass men do a real time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I yeah. mean, sometimes we have these these sort of overcorrections that occur. You know, there was something that just took place this week. There was a WNBA coach, and I'm not going to mention his name, hmm. but um, uh, he was trying to get a foul call from one of the referees, and he made a comment about an opposing player, and he was like, "Yo, I mean, she's 300 pounds," and you know, as if he should have got the call because this person was so big. And in reality, this young lady, she's six foot eight. I think she's about, you know, 235 pounds. But for a female, that, that's rather large, right? But the fact that he referred to her as being 300 pounds, um, he, was, he was fined and he was suspended for that because it was deemed to be, uh, what do they call it? Um, like body um, shame. Body shame, yeah. Body shaming is what they called it. And so in a case like that, had he said something like that towards a male, no one would have blinked twice. You know, they wouldn't even, you know, it it wouldn't even be news. But the fact that he said something like that, and really he wasn't far off as it relates to this, this young lady's weight, he was, he was suspended and, and fined because of it. Because I mean, now we're sort of, you know, going a little bit too far you know, in my opinion, you know, to, to the right or to the left, whatever you want to call it, in, in correcting some of these scenarios, while some people like, you know, our former president, you know, gets off of the things that he obviously did. So, you know, somehow, some way, man, we got to level this thing out so that, you know, right is clear right, wrong is clear wrong. And, you know, we don't have these extreme circumstances where people get over penalized or under penalized for you know the same type of behavior right i think that um you know we talk about bill cosby you know but what about hugh hefner his parties he had to have some wild parties but you don't really hear too much about that and i know you know what the thing about it is i don't care whoever party it was when you go to these parties you know what time it is you know what time it is if you go through the door you know what i mean and my thing is that if uh, and I'm not saying that it's okay to to abuse or, or someone or whatever, but my thing is that if you're going into dangerous territory, you have to realize what you're getting into, and that goes for males and females. And if you go into it, and then a year or two later, you don't feel like you know. And I, I guess people say, well, they have that right. That is true, but I don't think that people should, um, you know, when you when you can't help a situation, I understand, but when you can. And then it's overcorrected. I feel that there's some overcorrection, like you said, Charles. If I know that I'm going to a spot where there's possibly some orgies or something going on, I'm not bringing my girl. I'm not bringing my wife. You know what I mean? You know, I'm not even going to go all together if, if that's not how it goes down in Hollywood. But my thing is that I think you have to uh, make some serious decisions when you go somewhere. Now, if you've been bamboozled and tricked into it or, or somebody tricked you or kidnapped you or whatever, then I, I agree. Right. Slip you a Mickey. Yeah, slip you a Mickey. Uh, they, they, they need to get, you know, thrown under the deal. But I think the overcorrection is that if you know you were going into somewhere and and you were under duress, then I could get it. I get that you, you know, that's not your fault. But if you're saying, hey, we're having a party, it's going to get a little wild, and you go in and then, you know, after the party's over, you want to start pointing fingers. I think that's, that's kind of tough. But due to the fact that the laws and different things now that have uh, changed, um, I think it makes it easier for somebody to go, you know, to go, you know, get into that situation and then uh, have second thoughts. 
the next day about what happened. So, so you guys remember back in the days where you had uh, Mike Tyson? You know, he was a, when he was on top, he, he mm -hmm. would be out, right? And and he got a case like every week, every time he went to a club. Now he roped against a girl. You know, he he grabbed my ass or, or whatever mm -hmm. it was. And I'm not saying he didn't do that, but what about Joe Neckbone over there who did the same thing? Right. He ain't got nothing to get. So right. you're a target. He ain't got, right, right. So when you say going into these environments, so, you know, I blame Tyson and Tupac and all these guys for putting themselves in that situation, right? Because they know who's out there and they know where they was at. But I'm saying those are opportunists, man. Like, dude, like, come on. Like, really? Like, Mike Tyson had to, had to coerce somebody? Like, he was on well, top of the world. But that there, therein lies the, the conflict, you know, right there, especially amongst women, because there are there's a certain percentage of women that would go for that. And, you know, they, they would be the ones doing the grabbing and, and, and things of that nature and be very aggressive, you know, towards these guys. But then you also have in that very same crowd, the women that have some self-esteem about themselves and aren't going for it. So yeah. if, if and, and, and so it's difficult for obviously a male to walk into that setting and know who's who. But he has to, he has to treat everyone at, with a certain level of, of respect. Of you know yes. what I mean? In order not to fall victim to that, because right. you know, uh, three out of four of us on this call have sons. So that's the conversation that we need to be having with our sons. Is that you know, again, the no has to be no. Right. You know, uh, like I said, you know, in the book of Man Law. Uh, a, a drunk yes is still a no. Yep. You know what I mean? There, there, there are still ways that we need to carry ourselves. And just because a woman is dressed a certain way or, or you know, you know let, let's face it, man. I mean, some of them just out there just showing everything, every body part that they have. But just because they're dressed like that doesn't mean that you could just touch them any kind of way. Or you can you know, and definitely not force them, you know, to do anything. Yes, it's suggestive. Yes, it's confusing. In some cases, they're, they're sending off false signals. But at the same time, we as men, we got to keep it at a certain level. If that Me Too movement has not taught us anything else, it's that, that not only do we need to care for our women, but we also need to care for ourselves to make sure that we don't fall into some of those dangerous situations. Yeah, yeah. What do you think, Steph? I was sitting here reflecting on the fact that when I was in the seventh grade, um, back in the day, I wrote a sexually suggested note. I mean, it, 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 was, it was strong. You know, I was just starting to feel myself. I, you know, my English was starting to get there, as well as my mind. And uh, another guy co-signed with me. And so I gave the note to the girl, and then next thing I know, she ran up and gave it to the teacher. I was wrong, but that was in 1979. If I had done that in 2021, I'd be out of. I'd have probably been expelled from school. You'd have been expelled, no question. You know, you know, and and that's the danger that um, our young men, as well as women too, face. Um, you know, and and I, I was thinking if I had a son now and i i'm the one with you know two girls you know and he was of age and he was um you know dating or whatever and he went over a girl's house unless she started undressing you dude don't don't press her don't mm -hmm. press her. you know she needs to undress you um and throw the condom on for you then you know it's on until then until you can trust her yes means no and you know and and make sure you have an exit strategy that's the best way that's the safest way go yeah. ahead Wayne. i know you want to say something who me yeah you. so so i think i think a lot of this like when you bring up the point about young son about having sons and things like that and i think some of the problems with this is how uh socially inept these kids are mm-hmm 
And, and you know, with all this social media and all this stuff, they, they think they're so social, but they don't really interact with people. And no. you know, if your resp- if your interaction on social media is always responding to some girl twerking, so how are you really talking to her? You know what I mean? So then you go out in the street and you think you could talk to another girl just like that? So so I think I think there's a lot of there's a lot of challenges there. But Steph, what you say, yeah, the things that happened in the 70s, 80s, whatever, today you got, you know, and, and I, not that it wasn't wrong then. But it's just that the, the the action is so much swifter, so much stronger now, and I, I don't know. It's it's tough. It's tough to know where you're supposed to be at, and so you just kind of, you know, you got to like Charles said, you got to be safe. You just got to be safe and protect yourself because it's somebody gunning for you. Right. Well, well, that brings me to my next question: is um, empowerment. When you do empower different people, uh, let, let's let's go back. Let, let let's move it back a little bit. Celebrities, all these different celebrities that came out. Why do you think they, they came out at the time? Is it because they're financially secure? They have nothing to worry about. They got to where they wanted to be. What is the reason why you think that they, they came out? Is it something that was deep-seated and it finally came out when they saw it happen to someone else? Or do you think it's a culmination of uh, all those? Well, well I, when I, I talk... I, go, go ahead, ahead. Talk. Go ahead, go ahead Steph. All right, when I talked about Harvey we- um, Weinstein, you know... American celebrities, Gwyneth Paltrow, Ashley Judd, Jennifer Lawrence, and Uma Thurman all soon followed. I don't think they would have done that if they weren't financially secure. And, and Harvey Weinstein, you know, um, probably pushed a lot of their careers, but at the same time, um, he probably, cost. yeah, yeah, there was a cost to it. So I, you know, in a way, yeah, they did do it because they were financially secure. And of course, they are A-list uh, celebrities, so their name means something. And, and, and they were trying to empower other people. But if they were B-list or C-list celebrity or, or someone trying to make it in Hollywood, I don't think they would have said anything. But well, why didn't they go first? I agree. I agree. Well, I, I think the movement, you know, created a safety net um, for them. You know, it, it created a safe space for them to to come out. But it's it's always those first one or two individuals that are taking the greatest amount of risk mm-hmm. um, it, because you don't know what the backlash is going to be. I liken it to Colin Kaepernick, you know, for example, he was basically out there by himself kneeling and it cost him big time. Now, you know, some people, you know, came in, you know, slow but surely a little bit, you know, behind him, but he was first and it cost him big time. And I think had there been a safety net, sort of a me too type of platform in the NFL or in athletics in general, I think you would have seen more athletes, you know, come out like that, but there wasn't, you know, he was out there by himself. Let me ask you this though, just, just came up when you said that, um, Do you remember, okay, I guess where I'm going is, is it because there's white people pushing this that it works? Because if you remember, there was someone when, there's been black people who come out, black women have come out before. And if you remember uh, Clarence Thomas. Oh yeah, no doubt. Mm -hmm. What happened to her? Mm -hmm. Anita Hill, right? What happened? Anita Hill, that's right. They they, they clowned her like she didn't know what the hell she was talking about. Mm -hmm. And so, but had that been Becky Hill, would that have been different? No, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because he's a Republican Supreme Court justice, and the Republicans will do whatever it takes to get their guys through. If he had been a Democrat, he probably would have been toast. Even with the okay, all right, yeah, no. but 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 okay. But these people, when we talk about these celebrity named people who are getting caught out there and getting some serious time. The people who are, are pushing the charge are white late women. They're not black women. That's true. And, and, and so, in my eyes, it looks like that's why there's action. Mm-hmm. Oh, no question about it. No question about it. If you look at it, um, this latest uh, anti hate lynching um, bill that, that went through for the Asians got pushed through because Asians. Quick. Yeah, they were quick and. Um, you know, and, and angry, of course, you had a vice president who's half Asian, but also white people signed up because they knew it was wrong. But damn it, if we if black people get up and say, 
hey, can you stop lynching us? Can you stop killing us? Oh, hey, look, 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 that was back in the day. We're not doing that anymore. Um, you know, you complain too much and you're still not getting your 40 acres in a mule. But that's another conversation. Oh. Okay. Um, as far as breaking the silence, do you think there's still some uh, male celebrities um, that are not saying anything? Yeah, male and female, man. I think well, I know they're the female, but I mean, I know Terry Crews came out. Um, besides him, I, I, I saw there was a young kid who was an actor. I'm not familiar with his name, and it was an older actor, director that, that took advantage of him in one of the um, one of the summaries I was looking at. But um, do you think there's more, and why do you think they're not coming out? So for me, I think it's a lot like those those people that don't come out against the Catholic priests. You know, that there's a there's a different there's kind of a different stigma, right? So so uh, um, if you're a dude who's getting abused by another dude, that's that's a that's kind of that's just it's different, obviously. But I'm just saying. You, you, you're, you're dealing with so many different things mm -hmm. to like, you know, how you let that happen, you know, mm -hmm. kind of a thing. And as a woman who's su supposed to be more seemingly uh, less able to protect herself against a man, you know, you know what I'm saying? Maybe that didn't come out right. But yeah, I think there's plenty of dudes, just like I said, with the Catholic Church, it, it, man, th there was only messing with boys. You think there's only five of them? <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of little boys. Yeah, male male um, victims of sex abuse tend to remain uh, more silent by and large than, you know, obviously their their female counterparts, because um, there there's that I guess that stigma that's associated with it. It's almost like a, a no win scenario, because the spot and and let people know that you were abused by a male then that carries something with it and if you blow up the spot saying that a, a female you know came after you a certain way and you resist it then that makes you look a certain kind of way as well should it be that way absolutely not but that's just that's the way it it it's had has a tendency to work you know, with men, you know, they, they tend to suffer in silence. And I think that leads to some of that, you know, mental health, uh, some of the challenges that we have amongst men, because there's, there's that suppression element, you know, where you feel like you can't speak up, right. You know, so you, you're carrying around that, that silent pain or that rage and things of that nature. And yeah, there, there should be some type of, you know, me too movement, specifically for men to be able to find that safe space where they can, you know, sort of, you know, get that out there and, and, and care for whatever mental, you know, anguish that they're going through. But unfortunately, society has not created that space for them as of yet. So, you know, here we are. So what do you, I'll ask all you guys this, I mean, what do you, so what do you think is going to change? I mean, uh, you're still going to have those powerful producers, directors, uh, you're going to have record moguls, all those different people that probably still are doing the same thing. Um, they're just um, possibly finagling the system, but not just male. I'm talking about there's females out there who are high in the industry that also utilize that. How And my thing is that how many of those things are being reported due to the fact that it's a male, you know, or do they report it? Do we report it? If we're male, do, are we going to report that a female executive or director or or media mogul or record mogul female has taken advantage of me? What do you I think? Mean, I think it goes back to like what Charles was saying and we kind of touched on earlier. I think it's, it's less likely. I'm not saying it can't happen, but it's less likely. You know, I, I think that when you look at some of these people, well, let's just talk music, for example. If you look at some of these people that are in the music business, they, you know, they, they have talent, but they don't necessarily come from money. Mm -hmm. So basically what happened, it's like these professional athletes, if you look at the NBA, NFL, the percentage of them that come from money is very low. So they're, they're, this is a, this is their ticket out of whatever situation they were in. And so I think people make, make decisions that they later regret. Uh, 
but they make those decisions because they they, they want to be a singer or a rapper or whatever the hell they want to be. Mm-hmm. And this person ha- holds that golden ticket to say, hey, do this and I got you. And then they do it and, you know, maybe at the moment it doesn't mean nothing to them but as time goes on and they grow and they get more mature whatever they're like that shit was wrong yeah and, and let me say this mike also and maybe you all have an example of this but i don't we've all heard rumors of um some of the men that have been violated in some of the worst ways in in hollywood entertainment music industry you know the whole nine yards but we've never heard it from the horse's mouth. At least I haven't. Where there's a rumor that X, Y, and Z was abused. You know, Joe Blow singer was forced to do this by Joe Blow music executive. But Joe Blow singer is never the one exposing that information. It's always the rumor about what he had to do to get that record deal. You know what I mean? So it's the women have have come. And they have spoken in in first person context. They said, I, I was abused. I was raped. I was made to do this. I have yet to hear any guy come forward other than Terry Crews. But, you know, his situation is not necessarily as violent, if you will, as what has occurred with some of these other people. I'm talking about the guy that has truly, truly been violated. That brother's not speaking up. I, at least I haven't heard of, of a scenario where he has. Yeah. I don't know, man. I just think this whole, this topic is, is, is a very, um, it's a serious topic, but it's also, um, you know, it, it's a thin line between so much stuff that's going on between the, the, the activists, um, empowerment, uh, being ashamed, the awareness um, on both sides. I, 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 when somebody says me too, the first thing I think about is a female, but I know there's males involved. Um, I just think it's a slippery slope when you're talking about it because, um, you know, so many people have these, uh, you know, these feelings about it, especially the, the females who've been abused or used in certain sex crimes or whatever. And um, I think between trying to get people help and protecting people, but also what do you do to the people who, who know that this, they're in a dangerous situation, whether it's male or female, they put their self in and, and then it's too late. And then all of a sudden, like, what is that fine line there where it's like, well, you can't say I told you so, or can you, when it comes to something like that? What no, do you guys I, think about that? Yeah, I don't think you can ever tell them I told you so. You got right. you just got to be there for them. It, but for, so, for example, if someone says, hey, look, I was sexually harassed or I was sexually assaulted or raped, even worse. Right. Um, um, all you can do is be there for them, get them the support they, that they need. Right. Uh, and you may not be the person to be the right person to do that support. Um, but unfortunately, there have been enough victims out there that they can provide the support to get them to the next step. But, um, you know, believe, you know, especially our women, believe them if they say it happened, you know, and, um, you know, from there, let justice take its course. Yeah. And, okay. and for the men, you know, like we, we spoke about before, even even females, rather, um, you, you have to protect yourself. You know, when you're in the workplace, for example, um, if you have a, a, a one on one meeting with the female, that door needs to be open. Mm-hmm. Or you know, cracked, at least. Yeah. Someone needs to be able to look in and, and see you know, what's going on in that particular space. So, you know, so just making those sort of common sense moves, I think will go a long way towards protection. And because I've, I've been in scenarios, man, in corporate America where the women have been very aggressive. You know, I had, I had a female send me a condom in an envelope, you know, um, you know, to, to my office. I've, I've had, um, you know, suggestive notes and, and, and pictures and, and, and things of that, you know, nature occur. And you have to be very careful in those scenarios because women, you know, we talk about the male ego, women have some egos, bro. And when you reject a woman, oh man, I mean, hell had no fury, bro. You, you yeah. have to really, you have to, it, it's, it, you have to really be strategic in terms of what you do and how you do it in those scenarios or you can find yourself 
caught up. You can find yourself victimized or accused of something that you know in life that you you never even thought about doing. Right. Yeah, like we said before, it's 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 the accusation, right? Mm-hmm. So now you gotta defend yourself. But you know, while you defend yourself, maybe you lost your job, maybe you lost your your family, maybe you lost all these things while mm-hmm. you're just trying to like, yo, this is crazy. You know, I, yeah. I, I think there's a level of sensitivity. I think we've been talking about it before. And, 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 and by no means do I say that there's no crimes that are going on. There's no things that need to right. take care of, by no means. But I think we're, we're oversensitive to a lot of things, you know, slightly related, but a little bit different is like this cancel culture, right? Where you, it's almost like people are looking to be offended, you know, like, like uh, uh, did, did you just look at my breasts? You know what I mean? Like you didn't really necessarily, you know what I'm saying? It's almost like that. And it's like, what? I'm looking out the window. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you don't, it doesn't have to get to the point where you're physically touching or making someone uncomfortable by trapping them in a corner or something like the old, you know, I don't know, these, these stalker types or whatever, but it it, it can be so subtle. And next thing you know, you're defending yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's men and women. I'm not saying it's, and I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying I'm just saying this is what it is. I think there's a lot of women who are who are who have been victimized of whatever it is, and I think it's really good for them to come out. But I think that there are opportunists in in, in all these op- in all these things. So, you know. Okay. All right. Well, um, I, I know. I I think it was a very um, sensitive topic. I was a little hesitant about it because there's so much stuff you can go deep down into the rabbit hole in regards to this, the way things are for male, females. And um, it would have been very enlightening now that I think about it to actually have a female on to get a different perspective. And um, I don't know, but we'll, we'll see how this goes. But I think that we might be able to come up with another episode, maybe um, with a different title and maybe, uh, you know, give some females the opportunity to really, uh, you know, explain maybe from their their standpoint point how they see it because you know it's all of us here are males and i know we have different uh viewpoints but i, I think a female or females uh guests on the show would probably give us a, a little bit of banter back and forth we can uh, go back and forth with them and talk about uh certain things because i know they've been in situations and we've been in situations where we had to uh do the right thing doctor you know like the, like the movie says do the right thing and i think everybody's been put in that situation and um I think it's very important if you don't have that in the back of your mind. Um, I, I think things can look at, things can get a little crazy. So we're gonna wrap it up here. I'm gonna, um, you know, let you guys. Uh, if you wanted, if that was it, uh, your last say so. I got if a couple. Not, Wayne, you want to? I got a couple wanna, quick wanna, things I want. I want to yeah. mention, but uh, first, Mike, I was gonna tell you. Uh, apparently, there's a sunset in Connecticut. It's all on your face, baby. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, so I just want to let you know, know that that's that, what it is. Yeah, so when you see the record, you got you got to get a good look at it. Yeah, it um, looks like zebra, zebra stripes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. But um, I just want to say a couple of things real quick. Um, you know, if you look at some of the people who have been in politics or in office that have uh, had accusations against them, you know, sometimes, like I said before, you have to defend yourself. What you know, I'm not saying who's innocent and who's not innocent because I have no idea. But what I'm saying is, you know, like Al Franken, for example, he, he had to resign. Was he guilty? Maybe, you know, but maybe not. But but is it easier to resign? It's almost like it's almost like the whole thing with Michael Jackson. When you pay off some, is it easier to pay someone off or go through that whole process? Right. It, but look at know, Governor Cuomo. I, he was on my list, right? He, he said, hell no, hell no, hell no. And he didn't. What did he do? He legalized weed in New York instead. <laughs> if I forgot that shit. Right, so, right. <laughs> they forgot all about it. Hey, you call him a spin doctor? Hey, man. Hey, man. Let's make the magic. Look over here. So, Brought me up from the fifth floor. <laughs> so, so I'm just saying, you know, this is how careers can change, right? Al Franken was a comedian who became a politician. I don't know if he was good or not, right? I don't know his, I don't really know his politics, but, but he had to, something he aspired to do, he had to undo that. Look at the whole thing. You know, I brought up last week when we talked about Liz Cheney. I'm not a fan of hers, but she lost her job for no reason. 
I, it's right. just it's just crazy to me. Like, and how's that okay? Yeah, how's she that not against, part of it? She went against the Republican um, stronghold. But here's the thing, Al Franken. You're absolutely correct. Al Franken uh, resigned. And he was forced out basically by both sides of Congress. But right now, you got a guy named Matt Gates yeah. who is still in, yeah. and he's being accused of sleeping with a 17 year old and paying them off. But he's still there. Mm-hmm. Republicans will do whatever they can to to stand behind their guy. So, so it's the same thing, right? Charles said it earlier. It's the application of the law. Yes, it, it has to be equal. Right. It's just like in the criminal justice system, how come people of color have such a much harder time to go? It it just if the law is A, B, C, Mm -hmm. then it needs to be it needs to be dispersed against across the board for everybody. It's not like I not for you. You get a special deal and you get the worst deal. So two people accused of the same thing should be getting the same time. It should right. depend on the judge. I know. I know every case isn't identical, but but you cannot make it so that um, it's un, it's unequal. That that's all I'm saying. It just mm-hmm. has to be fair. Charlie, right? You got any final words? Um, I'm just saying. Um, well, first and foremost, Mike. I mean, great job. You know, with the topic tonight, and um, I think this is very important. Uh, we don't want to. Uh, downplay this by nope. any stretch of the imagination. We know that it's a very uh, serious topic. We know that women have been catching hell, you know, for centuries. That there is a lot of sexual abuse out there and rape, mm-hmm. and 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 women being, you know, forced into all types of negative situations because of men. Uh, we also know that there's some male victims out there that, by and large, you know, remain silent, but they're being victimized also, and in many cases by other men. So I would just say that um, if you're in a situation, um, I, I would say to you know seek whatever help that, that you can. Uh, there are professional services out there. None of us on this podcast are professionals, but just know that the Just Be a Man podcast, you know, we're we're with you. We're we're supporters of of the movement, and um, you know, we all of us have daughters, and we would hate to see our daughters, you know. In, in any type of uh, situation where they're being violated. So um, again, guys, you know, we, we love our audience. We love the women that um, support our show. And even those that don't, you know, um, you know we, you, we, we have your back. And again, uh, we're, we're supporters. So hey, that's all I, I, I look at it like this. Abuse our daughters, you're going to see the character or, or any of your boys' daughters, you're going to see the character of Mississippi Burning, Samuel L. Jackson with that old... <laughs> That old beat up white shirt, you know, he deserved to die. Mm-hmm. Well, what, no, uh, time to kill. Time to time kill. To kill. Time to kill. Oh, time to kill. Hey, yeah. there were so many of them at the time. I got confused. Mr. Burn, time yeah. to kill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, time to kill. So, yeah. so if, before you sign off, Mike, I just want to tell everybody, yo, know, thank you for joining us on Just Be a Man. And uh, don't forget to check us out on all of our social media platforms. We're trying to grow people. We're trying to grow. We got a couple spot. We got a big sponsor with uh, Jay, um, with uh, Manscaped, Manscaped. And, and we're trying to continue to grow. So there are some opportunities for you guys. Hey, who doesn't want 20% off? But definitely check us out. Check us out on all social media platforms. Check us out on YouTube. We're, we're trying to grow our YouTube presence. We're on all podcast platforms. And we're just, we're trying to put some information out there. You know, just a couple of fellas trying to, trying to make a little difference here. Uh, we have fun doing this and we're hoping people are getting something out of this. So don't forget jbampod.com, jbampod.com. That's our website, all of our information there, all our episodes are there. We are over 60 episodes now, over 60 in mm-hmm. about a year. So we're trying to make it happen. All right, back to you, Mike. All right, well, you know, with the sun sun going down in my face in Connecticut, uh, <laughs> evidently my shade is not a, small enough to, to cover, you know, the sunlight coming in. I guess that's this guy shining his light on me. Thank you. Amen. Anyway, Amen. Um, I would just like to say that uh, I would like to thank everybody for tuning in. Uh, for those of you who turn in, it's a tough, it was a tough topic. I didn't really want to take it on because I really think that, um, you know, there really needs to be, uh, you know, a balance of some young ladies on. So maybe if anybody's listening in the listening audience, um, if you want to, you know, we try to figure something out where, where we can take a email or or maybe we can try to get you on. We'll figure it out somehow. But I, I think it's a very important that we we follow up on this because I, I don't I, I think we only 
scratched a little bit of the surface, you know, of what's going on, of what we see in social media. I'm sure there's a lot of history and a lot more things that we can talk about. But once again, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in to Just Be a Man. I want to say thank you to my, my co-host for being here. Uh, one of us, our boys are missing. Uh, got the Chuck. Chuck, but he's yeah, handling nice. his business. Uh, he got the graduation week going on with, with, with his son. So we understand that, Chuck. Good luck to you and the son and the family. And uh, we just want actually, to say. Actually, yeah. not only Wayne, as well as um, uh, Charles, y'all all got graduates coming up. Congratulations. Amen. Amen. And, and, Me too. and Mike. And Mike. Yeah. And Mike. June 24th. Amen. Amen. Yeah. June 24th. Amen. Tomorrow. You know, tomorrow's my magic day. Yeah, oh, tomorrow? Tomorrow's mine as well. Yep. Is God. it? <laughs> well anyway i just want to say thank you to everyone and uh thank you for turning in just be a man and we look forward to seeing you next thursday deuces <laughs>